I'm Amy from the West Wickham congregation and today for our Genesis devotion we've made it up to chapter 15 and today is on 15 1 all the way through to chapter 16 verse 6 and this is where God starts to enlarge on his covenant promise with Abraham so he's given Abraham other promises already but now in this chapter he tells Abraham that he is going to have a son that will be his own flesh and blood who will be the heir not only to Abraham's great wealth and worldly riches but also would be the beginning of a great nation in fact a nation so big that it would number more people than there are stars in the sky and in verse 6 of chapter 15 it tells us that Abraham believed the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now obviously he told Sarah this, his wife, and they must have been absolutely thrilled and excited. But the problem for them now wasn't that they believed that this amazing promise would happen, they did. But the issue was they didn't know how it would happen. And they didn't wait on God to find out. If you've been following the devotions already, you'll know that Abraham and Sarah are well on in years. And that Sarah is too old physically to have a child. And so the pivotal word now for where things start to go wrong for Abraham and Sarah is in 16 verse 2, the word I. And Sarah says, perhaps I can build a family through her meaning her servant Hagar. Sarah took on herself the responsibility to make God's promises happen, to make them come into reality. And actually, her thinking, her process of thinking for the time was quite logical. It was, it was an acceptable thing to do in her culture at that time, that if the mistress of the house couldn't have children, that she would give a servant girl to the husband and he would sleep with the servant but the child that they had they would then take and adopt and make this child the heir. Um, so she and Abraham very much just used worldly wisdom and we know Abraham agreed with this idea of Sarah's when she said perhaps I, me, I can build a family through her, Hagar. We know Abraham agreed because it tells us that he slept with Hagar and Hagar became pregnant. But again, the trouble was that they didn't ask God first. And as a consequence, both women suffered. Because Sarah took on herself the responsibility and the burden that wasn't hers to carry. God was the promise maker and God is the promise keeper. He didn't need Sarah to work out the details for him. She made those decisions for herself without asking him. Now, conversely, almost at the same time, Abraham did the opposite. Because he found himself in a very tricky position. Because he agreed with Sarah's idea, he then very quickly found himself in a household where he had two women at loggerheads with each other. Hagar was now a mother-to-be. She was younger because she was pregnant with Abraham's child. She was more important and she was just filled with pride. And that pride made her disdainful of Sarah, the older woman. And she'd have thought of Sarah as just useless and old, the old one, you know, of no good to anyone or anything. Whereas Sarah, poor Sarah, would have been absolutely consumed with jealousy. She had to live through the deep pain of seeing another woman have her absolute heart's desire, what she'd wanted more than anything else, and it had been given elsewhere. And so not only that, but then she was having her nose rubbed in it. So understandably, and not surprisingly, she used her authority to take revenge and to mistreat Hagar. Both women, it's understandable why they reacted the way they did from a worldly point of view, but it was horrible. Both of them were suffering. And when Sarah cried out to Abraham and said, you have got to sort this out. 
in 16 verse 6, he basically throws his hands in the air and it abdicates all responsibility as if this pregnancy had nothing to do with him at all. You think, really? But he was like, no, nah, it's not my problem. She's your servant. You deal with it. Nothing to do with me. He would not get involved. He was passive. He refused to exercise his leadership. He refused to exercise his authority, which he certainly had, not only as the male of the household, but the leader of the entire household. And as a consequence, Hagar, Hagar ran away and it would have been to her death if God hadn't then intervened, which you'll read about later on as the chapter goes on. This is a lesson for us that we need wisdom. And we need to ask God for the wisdom to know and to understand what we are responsible for and what we're not. You see, Father God gives us the great privilege to work in partnership with him. But he is the boss. So let's search our hearts today and ask, firstly, is there something I am trying to make happen which is actually God's responsibility? Do I need to trust, to wait, to listen? Maybe about an issue, a question, a promise. And secondly, are there responsibilities that I'm wanting God to sort out for me when I know I'm supposed to be getting on with this myself. Am I being passive in a situation where I know the Holy Spirit is telling me I need to be active and take responsibility for it? Yes, in the strength that God gives us. Yes, in the love that he gives us. But is there something where I need to step up? Hagar's son, when he was born, was named Ishmael. Ishmael means God hears and God still hears today. So today, maybe take these questions to him and ask him, talk with him about it because he hears.